Malkase Parama. Malira and Dula Makairi Moshin Telebose Kayama Parando. Lord, I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you for what a wonderful week. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance from evil. Thank you, God, for financial provision. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your influence. Thank you for your touch. Lord, I have come this morning to show my gratitude to you. To say to you that, Lord, I am grateful. You are a good God. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful. And we bless your holy name. Makai remoshen telebo makai remoshen te malakai remoshen te ba ilai remoshen kaya ma pan remoshen te ba we have come back to say thank you lero sente makai remoshen te malakai remoshen te ba ilai remoshen te makadiri ante remoshen te ba we are grateful we are grateful we bless your holy name thank you for the new house parish thank you for financial provision thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for your influence. Thank you for your touch. Malishete makari alabosete balakai rimoshete ba. In Jesus' name, we are given thanks. I want us to pray that the Lord will reach out from heaven and touch us this morning. We pray to God that Lord, touch me by your word. Touch me by your presence. Touch me during the praise and the worship. Touch me, O God, at different points, and then deliver me from evil. Touch me, O God, and take me to the promised land. Touch me, O God. I want you to raise up your hand to God as a sign of faith. And just say to him, my father, touch me today in the name of Jesus. Lord, move in the midst of the congregation and touch each and every one of us. Father, thou man that lacks financial provision, touch and deliver financial resources. That person that is seeking for a breakthrough, Lord, let there be a touch from heaven today. A touch of deliverance. A touch of healing. As many as come into today's service with sickness and infirmity in the body. Father, Lord, sometime during this service, let that man or woman receive a touch from heaven that will deal with that sickness and disease permanent. Father, that man, that woman that needs a touch to get divine instruction and clarity. Father, Lord, during the praise and the worship, as your word comes forth, Father, during the offering, even during the sharing of the grace, let there be a touch from heaven that will bring about healing, that will bring about deliverance. Lord, touch me. Touch me, touch me Lord, and bring peace. As many as are troubled, afraid, and worried, as many as are under the attack of the enemy, Lord, let there be a touch from heaven today that will bring about peace. Lord, as we stretch forth our hands unto you this morning as a sign of faith, touch us. Touch that body. Touch that career. Touch that business. Touch that womb. Touch that body. Touch us deep within and bring about transformation. Jesus' name we are prayed. My Lord and my God, I pray everyone that partakes in today's service, either physically here or over social media, Father, let each and everyone receive a touch from heaven. A touch of healing. A touch of deliverance. A touch of divine provision. A touch of divine intervention. Father, touch us, O God, and let us not return the same way we came. In Jesus' name we are prayed.
The Bible says how Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. Yeah. That he went about healing, delivering the oppressed. The call that we serve is a supernatural God. Now, so, and he's here to do the supernatural in your life. Are you ready to give him praise like never before? Somebody give your dancer and bless this supernatural God. Most high, now you be the original God. Supernatural Baba, reliable Jehovah Most High, now you be the original God. Supernatural Baba, supernatural Baba, dependable Jehovah Most High, now you be the original God. It's a simple song, say supernatural, supernatural Baba, reliable. Jehovah Most High, now you be the original. One more time, time, one more time, time. Super, supernatural, Baba. Somebody do your hands like this. Jehovah Most High, now you be the original. Somebody your hands like this. Supernatural, supernatural, Baba. Come on, now. Jehovah Most High, now you be the original. One more time, one more time. Super, supernatural, Baba. Now you be the original God Supernatural Baba Supernatural Baba Reliable Jehovah Most High Now you be the original So I bring, so I bring, so I bring To begin to dance to the Lord, come on. Somebody with a smile in your face. Hey. Okay, I want you to come on there. Oh, yeah, Benda. Benda, come on, come on, come on. Somebody. Dance to God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, supernatural Baba. Supernatural Baba. Dependable Jehovah Most High. Now you be the original God. Supernatural Baba. Supernatural Baba. Reliable Jehovah Most High. Now you be the original. So I bring. So I bring.
Somebody give Jesus praise. Give Jesus worship in the house. Come on. Lift your voice and worship him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him worship. He deserves your worship. He deserves your praise. Father, we bless your name. We give you all the praise, Jesus. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the ancients of days, the Lamb of the tribe of Judah. Come on, whatever you have, lift your voice and worship this God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The book of John 12, 32 says, If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto myself. This morning we want to teach you a song. It's, it's, it's a very simple song. It says, Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you up. Hey, we lift you up. Let's go. Say, hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you up. We lift you up. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. We lift you up. One more time. Say, hands up, hearts open. Wide as we, we lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up. We lift you up. We we lift you up. up. This is my part six. Let, Let all the other names fade away. Huh. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your heart. Come on, can I get a witness? Let all the other, let all the other names fade. It's a simple song. Come on, lift your voice. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, Jesus, take your Let all the other names fade. Jesus, take your Jesus, take your Jesus, Jesus, take your place. One more time, sing. Let all the other names, all the names fade away. Come on, lift your voice, sing. Let all the other names. It's a simple song. Come on, Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. We worship you. You are Lord and worthy. We worship you, God. Malekiana niya, kana niya. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you up. We lift you up. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. God will lift your name up. Hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you up. We lift you up. Hands up. Hearts open wide as the sky. Hey. God will lift your name high. Sing. Let all the other names fade away. Hey. Let all the other names fade away Until there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Let all the other names fade away All the other names fade Until there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus take your Jesus take your place 
one more time. We say, let all the other names, all the other names fade away. Let all the other names, all the other names fade away. Until there's only you, let all the other names fade away. Jesus, Jesus, take you. Jesus, take you. God will lift your name, God will lift your name up. Hands up, hands up, hearts open wide. So we lift you up, we lift you up. Hands up, hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. God will lift your name. Just we lift you. Hey, I want every shadows. I want trials and tribulations. I want poverty. We lift you. Say, we lift you up. We lift you up. One more time. Let all the other names fail. Come on, let the Lord hear you this morning. Let all the other names until there's only, until there's only you. Let all the other names fail. Oh, Jesus, take your, Jesus, take your place. Come on, we're doing well. Sing. Let all the other names. Let all the other names Until there's only Until there's only you Let all the other names Fade away Jesus take you I'll draw a man unto myself. Let I can be lifted. 
Leder Up above trials and tribulations, let our king say, Let our king believe. Above shackles, above chains, hey, let our king believe. Let our king believe. Above that nation. Above on employment, let a keep a lift, let a keep a lift. Hey, say, let a keep a lift it up, say, let a keep a lift it up. We lift your name, we lift your name, we lift your name. I will 
worship you with all of my heart. Hey, I will worship you with all of my mind, and we will worship you with all of our strength. You are our God. Go ahead and express your worship. Express your worship this morning. Express your praise unto Him. Go ahead and give Him your best worship this morning. He deserves your worship. He doesn't need your worship, but He deserves your worship. Come on. For the opportunity to be one of yours thank you for being our shepherd indeed we shall not want we exalt and we magnify your name there is nobody like unto you nobody can be compared unto you nothing is happening that you don't know about nothing is happening that you don't know about we trust in you because your judgments are true we trust in you because your ways are good we exalt your name we magnify you this morning we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. As long as we have our life, as long as we have our breath, we will continue to praise you. You deserve our praise. You deserve our honor. You deserve our adoration. There is none like unto you. None can be likened unto you. You are all in all. We exalt you today. We magnify your name. We give you all the praise. We exalt you. Only the living can praise you. Only the living can exalt you. So while we are alive, we praise your name. We give you glory. We magnify your name. We exalt you. We forget every other thing and focus on you. We focus on you. We focus on you. You have our life in your hands. Our times are in your hands. Father, we exalt your name. Hallowed be your name, our Father. Glory to your name. We bless you. We exalt your name. May our praise and worship be acceptable before you. In Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you are sure your life is in God's hands, that God is in control of your life, can you jump on your feet and shout a big hallelujah? He owns it all. Welcome somebody to church this morning with a smile. Make sure you prophesy to them. The good shepherd is in control. <laughs> the good shepherd is in control. No evil shall come near you. No harm shall come near your dwelling. You will eat of the best of the earth. If nobody prophesied to you, prophesy to yourself, it is well with me. My father is in control. He has my life in his hands. He will visit me today and show me a token for good. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Please be seated in the presence of God. We have so many testimonies. Praise the Lord. So if you have a testimony and you are now sharing, don't owe, don't owe God his thanks. Don't owe God his worship. I can see some people smiling. Praise the Lord. Okay, so please come out quickly. Two minutes, what the Lord has done for you. Oluwa. Oluwa Adam Isola, Adeyinka.
Ariel Lido. Please get ready as we call out your name. Akome Odabo. Sarah Ogbewe. And Pastor Martins. Praise the Lord. Please clap, clap, clap. Encourage them. Praise the Lord. Uh, okay, I just want to thank God for my life. I thank God. Uh, it was my birthday on Friday. I thank God. Yeah, so, so I'll just read from here. I want to give special thanks to God for adding another year to my life. I thank God for where he has brought me from, um, where I am, and where he's taking me to. God has been so good to me and my family in terms of protection, provision, health-wise, and so on. Living without a father for 13 years, God has shown himself to me. As a father to the fatherless, he has ordered my steps and he has not made me make a mistake that will affect me in any way. I joined, I joined RCCG, the new house, in November 2014, and since then, it has been a different and unique path all the way up. I have experienced divine guidance through PGT and his ministers who have mentored me in the way to go. God has made, me, made sure I never lacked anything because before I even asked, he had already provided People call me church boy and say, oh, my life is church, and they give negative vibes, but they always come back and say, it'd be like, say, good things, they happen for this, your church. Right? <laughs> I have brought a couple of them here, and they have begun to experience God in their lives. I prophesy that the divine favor and guidance I have experienced will rest upon each and every one of, every one of us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where is Oluwadam Saladenka? Praise the living Jesus. Um, okay, I, I want to thank God for my life. Um, on Tuesday was my 21st birthday. And um, I, I really, really want to thank God because um, I could remember a few years ago um, when I lost my mom at the age of nine. I, I just started secondary school and it was tough for me and my brother but God raised a family that cared about us. My granddad was married to 14 wives. So, so it was difficult for each of us. In fact, if you get to a war now and we meet some people say, ah, hi, how are you? Which family do you hail from? They are probably from my family. So, so like that, we were so many. And my, my uncle had to look out for so many people. But then he still, he still took me in. And he took care of me, although I was, I was not a very, very good child because I started out with very, very funny malignancies and very, very stupid um, kind of living. But a uh, few years later, uh, down the line, I, I grew to, to become recalcitrant to words. Nobody, if anybody said anything to me, I wouldn't listen. And then I finished secondary school. And when I finished secondary school, now it was time for me to get to school. Now everybody was scared because this child that is displaying this kind of character, when he now gets to school, come on, he would join cultists, he would be a very bad boy. But I always told myself they did, they did not understand me. But then, as time went on, the one man that actually believed in me, my uncle, he, he, yes, I did a lot of things very bad to him, but he still believed in me. And I'm happy he forgave me before he died. He died right on my hands. He, he, he died of cancer, and from then I told myself, whatever way I can, whatever way I can, because I lost my mom to cancer too. So I told myself from then that whatever way I can help the society from this cancer, I will try my best. So I gained admission into University of Lagos 2015. I was so sad that he could not, he could not um, behold me. He could not say congratulations because I hold him a lot. And that way, I, was, I, I continued. And since he was the only one that actually was ready to help me, and he had died, so where do I get help from? So from nowhere, his children, he just stepped up and said, okay, well, if we were going to owe your mother anything, it is going to be to take care of you. With all my, with all my indecencies, with everything, so I was now poised with the, the reason to now be reasonable. So from there, 
I got to school, I met a lot, I saw a lot of things. I, I had to choose to go this way or to go this way, to go the right or to go the wrong. But I thank God he surrounded me with friends that actually really mattered. He surrounded me with friends that, that arranged my life because I know I would have gone way far. And I want to thank God for those friends. I want to thank God for his favor over my life. I want to thank God because 21 years on earth without... Everybody thought I was, I was going to... I was gone. Everybody lost hope in me. I remember when I wanted to even kill myself because I did not worth to anything. So I want to thank God because I am a man now and I know what I want. I want to give God all the glory. Praise the Lord. You will live, you will not die. You will fulfill your destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Sister Ariola, two minutes. Good morning, church. Um, some months ago, I think in January, I came here to testify about my dad. Um, he had gone through a series of illness, cancer, everything. And I came here to pray and testify that he had come through it. Anyway, unfortunately, um, two months ago, my dad passed away. Um, I just want to thank God for his life, for a well-spent life. I thank God that, you know, he didn't see pain. He went away the way I think God wanted him to go away. I want to thank the church for their support, Pastor Gwenga. Pastor Mura, Pastor Deji, for their personal visits, their prayers, Sister Shola, Sister Yesime, everybody, vessels of honor, the hospitality group. I just want to thank the church for their love, their support, and their prayers towards my family. And I pray that um, we would all see our parents, and we would all bury our parents. Our parents won't bury us, and they will see our parents live to what God, them want, God wants them to be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Reverend. Praise the Lord. Sister Kome. Sister Sarah, get ready. Pastor Martins, get ready, please. Please encourage her. Encourage her. Praise God. Um, I was here in January, and I remember I gave a testimony about how the whole of 2017, I didn't have a job. So imagine not having a job, no source of income, and my savings had depleted. But um, ever since I joined this church, I made this church my home, and I made up my mind, and I told myself since January that no matter what I went through, no matter what was going on, I would always trust God. Um, fast forward to April. Sometime in March, uh, my mom's best friend came to our house one day. No, this was sometime in November last year. She came, and she was like, ah, you this girl, let's go for um, Christmas in the UK. And I was like, ah, auntie, I don't have UK visa. I have only a US visa. And it's going to expire next year. She then said, hey, how much does it take to expire and to get a visa? Go and apply and get one. How much will it cost? She gave me the money. I applied. Unfortunately, it came out two days after Christmas, which was my birthday, but she had already gone. So fast forward to March. She came again. I was like, ah, you've not used this visa to expire. I was like, auntie, when God provides money that I'll go. She said, okay, how much is tickets? Start searching for tickets. So I started looking for tickets. Just indifferent. I was just impartial about it. So I was like, if she gives me fine, if she doesn't. So I told her how much the ticket was. It was about a little up to 300000 So she said, I should just pray that. Someone was with her money, that if the person pays her, that she will pay for my ticket. So after Easter, she gave me um, half of the money for the ticket. And I was surprised. And I was like, okay, I've done, I've done 50%. Remaining 50%, God will find a way. But somehow, whenever I needed money to do something, I realized that I always had to take money from that one fifty thousand. I'll be depressed, but I needed to do things. I needed to take care of my house. You know, we need stuff at home and all that. But somehow, God always replaced that money, and it came back to one hundred and fifty thousand. I don't know how God did it, but I never spent more than maybe ten to twenty thousand from that one fifty, and I still had the one fifty. Now, fast forward to April. Um, my former employer, he has a friend that works in his top in government. So for no reason, the man called me one evening. And um, after the conversation I had with him, I remember that there's this prayer point that says that whoever your destiny helper is or whoever your helper is, that God should not give them sleep until they do what he has been proposed to do in your life. 
So that prayer point, I've been praying it for God knows how long, but I never really understood the gravity of that prayer point until that day. So he called me and he says that, oh, how am I doing? And have I found a job? I said, no. He said for some time he's been trying to reach me, that every time he tries to call me or he tries to get in touch with me, he would forget. And I was like, ah, okay, now that we're talking on the phone, because it's very difficult to get and find or even see. So he said, um, there's this company that wants to move into Nigeria. They are coming in from Canada and that um, he's a partner in um, Nigeria and that he knows he doesn't have time because he works with House of Assembly. He doesn't have the time to do anything with regards to this um, company. So he knows that there's only one person he can trust that can push it. So he called me and he said, he needs me to take this job. How can I do it? I said, sir, you know I can do it. That's why you called me. Because there are a lot of people you know in Abuja. How come you left Abuja all the way and you came to Lagos? That <laughs> I, that I can do it. Even if I can't, I'll find a way to do it that God will help me. So he said, okay that um, whatever I need to do, it, he will do it, um, he will, he will um, give to me, and that he would pay me a salary until the company starts, and then they can now take over my salary. And I said, no problem. Then I told him, but there's just one thing. I just, for some reason, I just pushed. I said, but there's just one thing. Before I start this job, that I'm supposed to travel to the UK and the US, that I don't have um, money to pay for the tickets, but I have visas. And the man asked, and I asked, why am I just telling him that, okay, what do I need to buy my ticket? I should give him the cost of the ticket and send him a text message. So I sent him a text message. I was reluctant, but I just said, let me go to the UK first. From the UK, I'll find a way to get to the US. So I sent him a text message that the um, price of my ticket was about 300,000, which was the ticket, uh, cheapest anyway at that point in time. So he said, okay, I'll send the money to you next week. Next week came, I reminded him and he said, send me a text on Tuesday. So on Monday evening, I prayed about it, and then I let it go. On Tuesday by 12, I started calling his phone. His phone was switched off. <laughs> For like two, three hours, I was calling, calling. The man's phone was switched off. So I just got on my knees, and I was like, God, you know what? I give up. I'm not going to do this anymore because you will be the one to send somebody to me. I will not be the one to look for anyone by myself. So on my way home, I got into traffic, and then sometime around 5 p.m., my younger sister called me on the phone the day before that. Oh, she needed money. I should please borrow her that 150000 I was like, ah. I said, well, the 150 is with me. I can't use it anyway. So I gave it to her. She said she'll give it to me back the next day. And I said, no problem. The next day came, and then I called her, but she refused to pick her phone. I was like, eh, how will I get this money back? But I knew that, okay, it was my sister. She would send me the money. I knew that the devil was just trying to mess with my mind. So on my way home, about 5 p.m., I was in traffic. She called me, and she was crying that the person that's meant to pay her back hasn't paid her. And I said, don't worry. Just leave it that. God will sort it out. And as I got home, I just opened my phone, and I just saw a text message of the full ticket amount he had sent it to me. I just got on my knees and I was like, God, I thank you because I don't know how I'd have done it. Before 12 midnight, I got another alert. My sister had sent me my 150,000. I was like, Father, it's only you that could have done this. The next day, I ran to Qatar Airways and I bought my ticket so that I don't spend that money. As I got home, I was watching TV. I was waiting for my mom to gist my mother. Ah, mommy, I bought my ticket to and all that. Then I was just sitting there and I got another alert on my phone, another 300,000. I was wondering where the money was coming from. I, I didn't see any name. It was a company name. So, like, one, I just first of all went to my knees. I said, God, this money can't be a mistake. There's no how. Because if the bank should call me or take this money from my account without contacting me, I'll know this is a fraudulent. So, I was now tempted. Should I move the money to another account of mine so they can't trace it? But, like, if I do that, I said, no, that, let me just leave the money. Anyway, long story cut short, um, the man called me and was like, ah, that, um, did you get any um, money in your account this afternoon? I said, yes, I did. I don't know who sent the money. He now started laughing. He said that he sent someone to give me the money the day before, but the person forgot. So he was angry with the person. So he quickly ran into the bank before the bank closed at 5 o'clock. But anyway, he can't ask me to return that money. That I should take that money as my first installment of my salary. So I was grateful to God. So the following week, I traveled. I was in the UK for like two weeks, and then he called me, hi, it's your holiday Play, make sure that you get in touch with the lady in uh, Canada so that you guys are in contact and you do your job. Don't just go on holiday and play. So I said, no problem, sir. And then he says, how far my US um, leg? I said, ah, it's only God I'm waiting for to do it for me. The man said, and he just left the US. He's on his way back to Nigeria. Okay, call me on Friday. I'll see what I can do. I called him on Friday. He said, call me on Monday. This call, 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 call. I just got tired. Monday by himself, he just called me and said, send me um, a dormant um, domiciliary account number. And I sent him a domiciliary account number. In faith, I have a dumb account. 
But my sister said, just in case, take my card. Since you don't have a card for your account, anything can happen. God will do it. So I sent him my sister's account details. And lo and behold, the man sent me the full ticket amount to go to America. And even gave me money for shopping. As in just take extra money for running around. I just want to thank God because I came back in June. And the six weeks I was out, it was more like it was... It was undeserving, but it was a well-deserved holiday because I've not traveled in the last four years. And it's been difficult. It's been truly difficult. So I want to use this opportunity to tell everyone here who is trusting God for something that my testimony seems like a lie. To me, it still seems like a lie. But I want to thank God because he always shows himself faithful. He has said it and every word that he has spoken has come to pass. And I prophesy to anyone here that is believing God for one thing or the other, financial favor, job, whatever it is, look to him. Don't look at the situation you're going through. Look at where he is coming, where you're coming from. Because where you're coming from is different from where you are now. And it's definitely better than where, it's not better than where you are going to. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I came to that testimony. <laughs> yes, before visa expires, oh, full expense paid trip. I receive in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Sister Sarah. Praise the Lord. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands and worship. I praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no God for his um, blessings in my life, my life and life of my family. Thank you for my sister. Just praying to God for the fruit of the womb by now she has a baby. Not Dr. Adams, I mean. <laughs> my other sister's business. She's been trying to be an entrepreneur and God has opened doors for her. My brother, thank God that God used, he's not having a job to teach him patience and humility. <laughs> and I thank God for myself. I don't know where to start, but I would say God opened doors for me that I, I have never uh, thought could ever be open and I say I would say I have a lot of testimonies and it's not because I have delaying it God confused me from all directions I, I was working at, I'm a pharmacist by profession and I was working in Abuja and I took a step of faith to said I'm, I'm going to start something else that you've been directing me to start in a way I didn't even know what that was I thought I had the idea and um, I'm confused I, I got a grant to do a job, not with a local government agency in Nigeria, not with a state government agency in Nigeria, not with, an, not with Nigeria itself, not with an African country, <laughs> with the United States of America. I didn't get one, I got two. I got them in the space of a week or two. Responding to the emails, I'll get confused. I said, haven't I responded to this mail already? They'll say, please, could you send us this form? Fill this form. I'm like, I feel this form. It was, it's, it's, it's a lot. And you know, when, when you hear testimonies, you're hearing the end. You're not hearing the beginning, where you started from and all the things you have done. And, and think God has pu put, put you through and the, the seeds you have sowed. And I think the message I want to give here is, I said, I said Lord, I'm going to be sowing seeds. Seeds that don't even make sense. If I see somebody, the person is saying, oh, I don't have money for this, I'll, I, mean, I don't have, I'll give. You know, I, I was just giving. One time, I, after leaving my job also, I had saved up to an amount of money. I entered my heart. I was in church. I remember I was sitting down there, a pa pastor was preaching, and he said, oh, it's, um, the next seven days, God is going to do, 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 
do something for you. In my mind, I said, what I'm looking for, I, if humanly thinking, it takes seven, more than seven days, but I will stand up, and I, I stood up, and I raised my hand. And I looked around, and I said, I'm the only one standing on <laughs> May not be like, now all snow well. <laughs> I sat down. But I went home, and I remembered. After a while, I started saying, I'm not sure I want to give away this money, because I've been working for quite a while, and it's not like I'm seeing any money. Our country doesn't make things easy for young people, really. Uh, and I, I, and it entered my ear. My, uh, it was my right ear. It says, it is better to give than to receive. So I carried my phone. I said, transferring. I just had 200, 250. And this, I've saved. And I've, you know, you spend, spend, spend. You know, is this the money I want you to start business? No, it's not anything. I gave everything I had. And for a while, I didn't have anything. But it was fine. I would start, I'll try and do a few things. Since I'm a pharmacist, I'll try and maybe find a way to do a bit of supply. But it's not, it's not easy, really, to do business, no matter what, even if you've been there for years. And I think God used that with, with the seed sowing and everything, and doors started opening. After I got those two, two contracts within a week, and I'll tell you, if I say it's a contract, it's something that... It's, it's, it's something that God himself put the idea in my mind and told me how to write it. I have never written proposals before. I did it. He, I sat down and I'm, I pray about it. Lord, give me inspiration. I, I, I'm a pharmacist. I'm, I'm working in community development. I'm doing contracts for international. As in, I, even me, if I look at myself, I can't place it. It doesn't, it doesn't follow a straight line, but that's how our God does these things. If you can understand it, then it's not God. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. And, and while I was doing that, so I, well, Ella was in the confusion of trying to understand how to respond and everything, and because I have to go back to Abuja because the projects were in the north. I now got another mail. I was in Lagos, and it says, "Congratulations, the one he has done is not enough." Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, you have you, you're going for an all-expense-paid trip. It's not within from one state to another state in Nigeria. It's not within another country within Africa. It's an international country and one of the prime destinations in Nigeria in the world. I was going to all expense paid trip to Rome. As in, you know when you're not even expecting it. Right now, I can't even, I'm just trying to cut short and join everything together. It's a story that I was hoping that the two minutes would be enough, but I think I have done a bit of justice because God deserves all the praise. He deserves all the glory. And in the midst of that, he's still opening more doors for me. Look at my height. If you know my age, what I have, as in, he, 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 as in he, he'll pass you through things. And you know, I made a vow. I said, God, I'm not going to be doing everything that everybody, my mates seem to be doing. Everybody that is young, they are going up and down. I'm going to be a God server. I'm going to refrain from things that don't make sense. What you have said should be done is what I'm going to do. Even up to, if, if minimum things like you, you want me to respond to an insult. But God says, be patient, be kind, be humble. I'm going to be stupid. You know, look like I don't have sense. I'm going to walk in church, walk anywhere just because of you. And it pays to love God, to serve God, to be stupid. People look at you like, who is this man? It's okay. Because when God starts dealing with you and doing things for you, they will be the ones to be wondering and say, ah, it's not this girl we thought was, was, was a nobody. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. From the mouth of two or three witnesses, all expense paid trips. God is telling somebody. God is talking to somebody. Pastor Martins. Okay, you know the drill. Encourage them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I really want to thank God for his goodness, his mercy. Amen. Thank God for connecting me to the New House Parish. I thank God for my pastor, my boss, Pastor Gwenga. Hallelujah. Amen. The entire pastorate, they've been awesome. I found a family here in the new house. Amen. Am I wonderful, the best choir in the world? They have been a tremendous blessing to me. Praise the Lord. Um, my testimony has to do with my elder brother. God delivered him from the power of the grave. Amen. I have been warning him, stay away from night crawling. Don't go out in the night. I've warned him severally, but... Um, I don't know what came upon him. That Thursday, that you know, terrible accident at uh, uh, Lab. Is it Oted? I, thank you. Um, he, is, he, didn't, he wasn't part of it, but the night of that Thursday, he went out, he drove out, and late in the night, parked the car, was trying to cross the road to get an item, and a power bike at full blast picked him up, threw him to the sky, 
<laughs> from his account when I met, he said when he was airborne, he was wondering that, so this is how he's going to die. Amen. And he came crashing on the ground. Praise God. I, he was rushed to the hospital. And when I got home, I met him in that condition. He was stable. His landlord came to see him. They were watching the World Cup. He was laughing. And, but I stood still. I looked at him. I said, this young man is going. Amen. I said, this young man is, I just, I said, come, we're going back to the hospital. He said, no, it's fine, it's fine. I said, we are going back to the hospital. He argued and argued and argued. I said, let, he said, it's fine. He was speaking faith. I said, mm, mm The Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There are things going on on the inside of you. We need the expert that knows the in and out to tell us. To cut a long story short, after much pressurizing, he followed me the next day to the hospital. They ran a series of tests on him, scan, and then they discovered that there was a leakage of gas or fluid to the neck. Praise the Lord. And they referred us from the Air Force Medical Hospital at um, Medical Center at uh, Ikeja to the General Hospital at Ikeja. General Hospital, they checked him. They said he's having emphysema. That's internal bleeding. And he was looking fine outwardly. I said, oh, you can be so... He couldn't handle it, referred us to loot, getting to loot. It was an emergency, and they had to take him through surgery. The surgeon came. I really want to thank God for his divine intervention. And with all I saw at loot, um, God is really working, um, doing real transformation in our public health institution. The surgeon there, very young and dynamic fellow, was just running after us from all those tests to test, the scan to scan. He was, before the result would come out, he used his phone, the soft copy of it. He was doing the analysis, praise the Lord. And they carried out the surgery on him, and there was this um, pipe connected to him, and a lot of things, the fluid were evacuated. Praise the Lord. But the enemy wasn't done yet, like what my pastor would say, that the enemy is stubborn pursuer. And you know, that's last two Saturdays, he was in the hospital. I left him from the hospital and God said I should come down here for the praying and fasting. And I came down while we were praying and fasting. He was fast asleep on his hospital bed and somehow the tube from the side pulled off. And when the tube pulled, he was asleep. So God woke him up and when he woke up, he was finding it difficult to breathe. So when he looked at his side, the fluid were leaking off and that was how he was able to call one, uh, somebody next to him and they rushed, they came and the surgeon ran and came and was shouting, give him oxygen, his lungs were deflating, he was really passing out and then he gave him this uh, hand glove, um, a rubber hand glove, gave it to him, said please do this for me, blow it, blow, keep blowing it until it will burst and he kept blowing it and that was how they were able to recover his lungs and he was stabilized and he became okay i really want to praise god for that divine intervention <laughs> praise the lord in james chapter 5 verse 16 it said the effectual fervent heartfelt prayers of the righteous makes tremendous power available and is dynamic in its working amen i want to seize this opportunity to plead with us that please this praying and fasting season that we are in we are in the last lap of it Please, let's come together and make power available for ourselves, for our family. And the Lord God of heaven shall deliver us from all evil in Jesus' name. The days are evil, but as we come together and we pray in the unity of faith, untimely death shall be averted. Amen. Disasters shall be averted. Amen. We shall not weep in this 2018 in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Pastor Kunle Roberts. Praise the Lord. Please encourage him. He's coming from a far distance. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. I want to testify to the goodness of God. Uh, I was coming back from um, somewhere in the east on Wednesday. Normally when 
we're driving back from Benin. I don't um, stop on the road because it was quite late. We left quite late. I think we left about 4.30. So uh, I think we got somewhere just before 6 p.m. The driver had already passed, and I said, you know, stop. Let's go back and buy. Because it was 6 p.m. at break the fast. Let's buy some fruit. So we stopped. We sat down a bit. We bought bananas and um, some other things. And then the guy that was in the car said to me that he wanted to use the bathroom. And I was still complaining. I said, listen, time, we've got to go. You know, as, as, I think about 25 minutes after we left there, just before the Jebu day, we saw cars turning around. You know, and then we heard gunshots. You know, the guy, so we, I told them to stop. And then the guy said that armed robbers had blocked the road and they were shooting. You know, um, I want to thank God because if we had not stopped, you know, and it was not the fast, we would have run right through into them. So I want to prophesy that the Lord God Almighty that has protected me um, against this arm robbers, that the Lord Almighty will continue to protect us and then keep us and cover us and hide us in his rock because I pass through that road all the time. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please just rise up on our feet and thank the name of the Lord for the wonderful things he's doing in our midst. The wonderful thing he's doing in our families, in our lives. Open doors, all expense, paid trips, deliverance from death, deliverance from armed robbers, making the fast effective. Let's give him glory. He deserves our praise. He deserves all our honor. In Jesus' mighty name. May be seated for the choir. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sure you will agree this morning that the testimonies are overwhelming and it's just proof that the Lord is here and he's doing wonderful things in our lives I just want you to whisper to somebody this morning tell them the Lord is so good Jesus is so good stay blessed in Jesus name Lord we are grateful
worship you, Jesus, for all that you're doing in our midst. Glory to your name, Jesus. Worthy is your name, Son of God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This song says, I know a God who's merciful and kind, faithful and gracious. I'm the apple of his eyes, the thought that feels hard every morning, noon, and night. Yes. He loved me when I didn't care and was patient till I came running back into his arms yes look how he turned my life around made me a shining star his glory to reveal share I will worship you forever love you forever because this God is too good I will worship you forever, love you, love you forever, because this God is too good. So I will worship you. I will worship you forever, love you, love you forever, because this God. Sometimes when um, we hear testimonies, especially when this is chokerized, they package together. The fullness of what God has done is not, is not, is not, is not revealed. But sometimes when you, you are involved in the storyline, you know what has happened. The testimonies we've heard today alone deserves this roof to open up. When you are broke, no way. And from nowhere, someone calls you that you have not seen for over two, three years. You have not spoken to. And since you are the one I've been looking for, 
And before you even start to work, I'll pay you in advance. And payments that you, you don't deserve, you have not worked for, paying free. It can only be God. It can only be what? Pay one leg, pay second leg, mistakenly alert you. I didn't tell you reverse it quickly, or else. <laughs> that can only be God. Those kind of things, it doesn't ordinarily happen. There are things that when you hear, you say it's a lie. And that's one of the reasons why I said we will no, be, no longer be reading testimonies. Because most times when I read people's testimonies, I tell people's testimonies, some people say, who's the person? It's, not, it's, not, it's a friction. They don't exist. Just for 30 seconds, I want the new house to go wild for God. That God is making the impossibility possible. God is showing himself as the living God. Just make a joyful noise and just scream and just, just glorify Jesus. Just exalt him. Just exalt him. Just bless his name. back that some testimonies were coming. Remember? Our sister that shared a testimony of how she was getting jobs overseas and writing proposals and sometimes you, you, you say, oh, so intelligent. Oh, how, you know, she packaged her proposal very well. I remember many times that we'll, we'll be talking and sharing our plans and praying along with her. Today, I'm so sorry to. <laughs> Today is fashion designing. And we're discussing about the proposed names and the logos. Tomorrow, it's no longer fashion designing. <laughs> Another idea has come. <laughs> we want to do a pharmaceutical supply. <laughs> I'm trying to. Okay, how do we merge it together? How do should we do the card? She... In the midst of confusion, not knowing what to do, where to go, how, is it to the left, is it to the right? Sometimes when she can't say, oh Lord. <laughs> Come on, just get your hands on something. In the midst of all those mess, Heaven opened. Heaven does what? From unsolicited, unknown, un... just a call. Began to travel around the world. Handling projects for international organizations. A young girl, just a single young girl. I prophesy upon someone here. A door will open for you yeah. that will change your life forever. Yeah. I decree over someone here. 
The God of remembrance will remember you. I speak concerning someone here. Because I see the God that is called the helper of the helpless. I prophesy upon your life what no man can do for you. What no parents will do for you. The almighty God will make happen for you. In the name of Jesus. Something is happening in the house. It's the almighty himself showing himself. Strong and mighty. That's why I want us to praise God one more time. I think the choir will give us a song. I want us to dance as if an alert has entered your account. You know, that, that kind of alert, you want to move it out before they... <laughs> like my sister. <laughs> so when they get there, they say, it's, it's too late. <laughs> Hallelujah. Irreversible alert is coming your way. Hey. So let the give us a song. I want us to dance and celebrate. Hallelujah for this testimony that we have received today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands up. Come on. Come on. Hey. You are a great God, and I do my rebab on you.
America, from the, from the Baden to Canada. Carry me the go, never carry me the go, the go, the go. Carry me the go, never carry me the go, the go, the go. Carry me, carry me, carry me, go. dancing and celebrate and just take offering and hallelujah. The testimonies and messages on their own. Both prophet and prophetess had prophesied. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3 verse 2 to 3. Jesus has been revealed in the house. Hallelujah. He's alive. He's alive, Jesus, he's alive, forever, he's alive, amen. At least for someone that comes to the new house regularly, we have encountered so much and so many testimonies that even if you used to doubt, if it's the same Jesus we're serving of yesterday, the same today and forever, by now, we are rest assured that he has made the new house his seat. Hallelujah. Amen. He has made the new house what? We are so blessed with so much divine move of God in our time. And we celebrate Jesus. We exalt him and we are grateful. Genesis chapter 3 verse 2 and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of, God, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, You shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Today, we want to talk about Jesus revealing himself as the great healer. In the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned, not only did they disobey God, but they ate what they shouldn't have eaten. 
and what they ate was made to kill. So what happened to them was that they were separated from God spiritually because they sinned. That's why in Genesis 3.10, it says, Genesis 3.10 says, And he said, I heard the voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself to it because of sin. Sin had brought separation. Verse 24, that's in Genesis 3, 24 says, So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of the Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every, every way to keep the way of the tree of life. That was separation. But apart from that, because they had eaten something poisonous, they had eaten something that was made to kill, something started happening to their body. The body that was supposed to last forever and be immune to sickness and disease started having problems. That was why when God said, if you eat, you shall die, it wasn't just a joke. When God speaks, he means what he says, and he says what he means. The scripture is not to scare you or to flatter you. It's the truth. That's why in Genesis 5.5, 5, Genesis 5.5, 5, it says, And all the days of Adam lived were 930 years, and he did what? He died. He did what? Why? Because it had been said, if you eat, you will die. So, the word wasn't just that they died spiritually. Physically, they died. That was why when Jesus came, Jesus did not just come to redeem us, to bring us back because man left and was separated. He came to bring us back and also to deal with, with death. That was why the Bible says, Jesus went about doing good. Hallelujah. He was preaching to save souls. But every time he preaches, he does what? He heals. Because Jesus is not only revealed to save you as per salvation of souls, he's also revealed to save your life, to give you life. Psalm 103, verse 2. Psalm 103, verse 2. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So it means that when you are in contact with God, your benefits are plenty. Hallelujah. It doesn't just stop on the first day that you meet and you are saved. There are other benefits that follow. We heard, when you serve God and you sow, you will reap. Seed time. There's harvest. Hallelujah. There's divine protection. You're about to get there, but you are delayed to, because you obeyed, to break your fast. If you weren't fasting, you wouldn't need to break. Am I communicating someone? So you will have gone. Why? Because you disobeyed. They say fast, they say no fast. So you need to break. Then you walk into it. But because you are in obedience, you have to break. So your breaking, your fast causes you to delay and you miss disaster. Benefits of salvation is divine pro protection, divine provision. So it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth? All thy iniquity, salvation. When you receive Jesus Christ into your life, He forgives you. Forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Like they are twin. When God saves you, He heals you. The same power to save you, the same power is there. To heal you. Who redeemed thy life from destruction? Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy? In the kingdom, there is 
the love of God to be experienced. The love that passes human understanding. There's the mercy and the grace of God available. When we talk about Jesus being revealed, we're talking about salvation, healing, deliverance, favor, protection, mercy. It's a full package. That's why when you experience Jesus, your joy becomes overwhelming. When you see people want, wanting to cry, it's not because of, not because there's something pinching them. No. To come to realization. Eminore, Olua, Eminore, Olua. Is it me? Am I the one? How did I get here? From where am I coming from? Who, who helped? How did I get here? Am I wiser than my friends? Am I, was I the best in my class? If you, if you have graduated, some people had first class. Some had two ones. Was I the number one in the class? So you, you, you wonder, where, so where are those people that were smarter than I was? Am I the most intelligent? Was I the fastest? So where are they? How, how did I get here? The mercy of God. That's why in John, in John 3.16, we, we need to understand that salvation is a full package. It's not just when, 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 when you hear about being saved. It's not just come and sit and come to church. No. It's a full package. Complete transformation in every area of life. As we're, as, as we're still giving testimonies, we're still in the journey. It's just what? The beginning. The Bible says this, the, 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 for the righteous people, it shines brighter. So whatever you have seen now is still the beginning. It's just starting with us. In John 316 that we normally read. I want to read from the message version. The message version. It says, this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son. And this is why, so that no one needs be destroyed. By believing in him, Everyone can have a whole and lasting life. It's not just it's a, have a whole, means that you are being made whole. Hallelujah. Lasting life that you can live long. So Jesus didn't just come to save you and you go, He came to do a complete work. Your health. Your sadness of mind, your well-being is part of the salvation package. Anyone, he says, and, and this is why, so that no one need be destroyed. By believing in him, everyone can have a whole and lasting life. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son for mere little point and accusing finger. You see? You see, if you look at the journey of Jesus Christ to the cross, it wasn't just to, I'm saved. No. That, that poverty might, might die in your bloodline is part of it. That no one will ever say, I'm in need, I'm poor, again. Just, just because of you. It's part of it. It's not just because you want to say, oh, I, I, the blood has cleansed me. No. He said he didn't go through all the trouble just for to save you. What kind of trouble did he go through? If you read Isaiah 53, verse 5. Isaiah 53, verse 5. It says, 
he was wounded for your transgression. The wound wasn't because he wants to save you. Because, oh, I'm born again. No. He was bruised for what's for, for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. So God went through so many things on the journey. Was kicked on the floor, spat at, abused, carried the cross, wounds, beaten, everything. It was put to shame, was disgraced. It wasn't just because he wanted to save. Everything he went through on the journey was for different aspects of your life. So when he said it is finished on the cross, he didn't mean that it is finished, you, are, you cannot be saved. No. It means there is nothing in life again that is left that can hold you bound again. If it's family cost, he has broken it. If it's gener generational bondage, he has delivered. Everything that man can use to accuse you, whatever can be seen under the sun to stand between you and your promised land and your destiny, he made sure everyone was dealt with. If you want to have an idea, check the meaning of iniquity. Iniquity is another level of sin. So, you, when you understand, so you understand that no matter the iniquity of your parents, he, he, had, he had sorted it out. Hallelujah. Is someone excited in the house? So, which means that Healing, deliverance, all that had always been in God's plan. The package of healing had been there. God wants you to succeed. He wants you to prosper. He wants to heal you. He had always been there. It wasn't an afterthought. He had always been in the plan. All that is needed is that you, all you need is to understand that. This is the will of God for my life. And that's why he made sure he didn't leave us empty. He gave us his word. As you chew his word, you begin to know more of his will. You begin to know what to expect. By now, you should, you should expect. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm preferred. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only, I've never been it. Whatever I lay my hands upon to do will prosper. The Bible says, touch not the anointed. As you are saved, you are anointed already. And do me no harm. No prophet, do me. Prophecy. As long as you have the word of God in your mouth, you can speak the word. You are doing what? You're prophesying. Tell your neighbor, I'm too blessed to fail. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. But one thing is that God wants you to know he has you at the back. But the next thing he asks you, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? In Romans 1, 16, Romans 1, 16, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, I want, all, I, want, I want the media to project it. I want us to read that scripture together. Say for, one, two, three, go. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Let's stop there. Let's say, read it one more time. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Let's say it again. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Wait there. There's so much, so much in the scriptures. And all you need is to lay hold on it. Have time for the word. And lay hold on whatever you desire in the scripture. And be ready to speak it, believe it, stand by it, and hold it to the very end. As long as you are not ashamed to be a Christian, you are not ashamed to speak the word of God. When people are saying other things, you're not ashamed to stand and speak the word. 
If you're not ashamed, you are in for a miracle. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the good of Christ. For what? It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. When you believe the word, it produces power. Hallelujah. It produces what? Power. The power that changes, the power that transforms us, that saves. When you believe the word, you don't need anyone to encourage you. I say, don't worry, it will work. No. I know it will work. Hallelujah. I know that it will work. It will work. I know I will get married. Hallelujah. I know I will be fruitful. I know I will succeed. Why? The word says so. Hallelujah. Why will you be healed? The word says so. Why will the storm come to an end? The word says so. If you are not ashamed and you keep confessing the word, you are in for a miracle. That's why I'm speaking to someone here one more time. You are in for a miracle. Amen. Romans 10, 17 says, Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Make the word your life. Connect yourself with the word every single day. Let the word be what, what drives you on a daily basis. The reason why you believe what you believe, let it be, is the, is the word. Not just because pastor told you or pastor said it in church. Or because people say so. No. Not because people are saying that. It's not the majority that wins. It's on whom, whose side and whose voice are you believing? Everybody might say you're not, you cannot win. They can say you're not qualified. Does it matter? Hallelujah. Because God is the one that qualifies the unqualified. Sometimes the world will disqualify you for God to qualify you. Sometimes the world will, will drive you out so you can enter your promised land. Someone here, God is positioning you. God told them that he's their healer in Exodus. And they believed. Say, I'm the Lord that healed thee. And they did what? They believed. And the Bible says, three million Jews came out of Egypt. And there was not a single feeble among them. Why? Because they believed the word. How much more in the new dispensation when we are under a better covenant the covenant of grace, mercy, and truth. How much more is available for you and I? And there's one thing about God, he's able to give all. Say to someone, all. all. Say it one more time. All. Say it one more time. All. Any miracle that God does for one, he can do for all. The Bible says three million went out. Every single one of them was healed. Three million healed, same day, same time. Bible says that the shoe was growing with their legs. Three million people, shoes grew with their legs. It says that their clothes was growing with them and did not tear. Three million people experienced the same miracle. Whereby, as the young boys growing higher, you know, parents understand that thing. You, you buy something for your child, and he says, oh, I'll wear it next Sunday, next, next, next week. The next time he wants to wear it, it's boneful. <laughs> Why? He has grown. You buy a shoe, wear the shoe for two months, next thing, is, my leg is paining me. The next time you want to buy it, you not buy two sizes ahead. 
then you wear, you put socks in front. Because <laughs> Hallelujah. To show you, you see, sometimes you need to, you need to draw the miracle to life. Imagine you buy one shoe for the child and use it for primary one, primary two, three, and the shoe is shining, it's school uniform, he wears every day, chain come every day. As he wears, drop it dirty, the next morning he wears it, it's clean. The thing didn't tear. You put a lot of money kept in the bank, you know? So imagine three million people experience the same miracle. Three million. Man, I was dropping from heaven, divine provision. Three million eight divine food. The, not not lot. Three million. To tell us that God is able to do for all. Every testimony, every miracle that happened that you've heard is able to do for everyone. You need to understand God in that dimension. When someone shares a testimony, it's able. The Bible says the spirit of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. See, when he speaks, when you hear a testimony, it drives, it multiplies. That same power is being released in the air. So I don't know which part of the testimony you are converting. But for those that are converting some, receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I know I love people be on all expense paid free. <laughs> Say, I receive it. Say it one more time. So, can God heal all? Can he provide for all? In Luke 4, 40. Luke 4, 40. Now when the sun was setting, all day that had any sickness with diverse diseases brought them unto him and he laid his hand on every one of them and healed them. All. Say all. He, he met all their needs. Matthew 12, 15. Matthew 12, 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from them and great multitude followed him. And he healed them. All. He healed them what? All. Which means there's enough resources in heaven to meet everyone's need. No need of jealousy or envying anybody. No need of, oh, why? When will it be me? Why can't it be me? No. There's enough. Enough for everyone. He healed all of them. All of them. So we say, Kobo, will God heal me? Will he meet my own need? Mark 140. Mark 140. That's the question. Will he do it for me? As a lot of people think, when you hear miracles, oh, he, he lifted that one. But what about me? Can he do my own? Maybe my own is different. You know, maybe our own is not. Their own family, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know what my own family, where I'm coming from. Can he do your own? Mark 140. And there came a leper to him, besitting him, and leaning down to him, and saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. Say, will you? No, you've done for it. You've healed it, but will you do my own? When he, see, that was the only person that asked he wasn't sure. Will God do it? Will he not do it? When Jesus was asked, will you? What did he say? He said, I will. Amen? He said, what? I will do what? He's always ready to bless you. Before you finish asking him, he's been waiting for you just to ask, just to dare to believe, just to expect him. He's willing to do it. And he's ready to do it. Matthew 8, 16. Matthew 8, 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him men that were possessed with devil and cast out the spirit 
with his word and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet, saying, Himself took out our infirmities and bare our sickness. Then in Matthew 14, 36, it says, Matthew 14, 36, And beseech him that they might only touch the hem of his garments. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole, all of them. One thing I want you to know today is Hebrews 13, 8, one of my, one of my favorite scriptures that triggers my faith. Anytime I see, I read that scripture. Is that Jesus Christ is the same. The same. The same. The same power. Same yesterday, today, and forever. He has never changed. And as many that believed, Philip believed, he too saw miracles happen. Peter believed, he saw miracles happen. Paul believed, he saw miracles happen. I'm believing God that today you will see a miracle happen. Amen. In your own life. In your own life. Amen. Something will happen in your life Amen. that will cause you to celebrate with great joy. Amen. But, one thing that, but one thing that always precedes it is the time to yield to him. It's a complete package. But there's something that opens the door for every other thing. Because that thing was what blocked and stole everything was sin. The moment sin is dealt with, the door opens for unlimited supply. But don't just stop on that sin. Oh, I'm not committing any sin. No. It's only the door to unlimited supply. When you, com when you comply with that, you have access to so, so many of the blessings of the benefits of God. I know some of us here who have answered to the call before. But I know that some of us were still battling with so many things. Addictions, pornography, lying. So many things that if we know that this is sin, we don't, do, we don't want to. Sometimes when we come to church, we remember things we've done, we're, not, we're ashamed. I'm saying, oh, I won't do it again. And you see yourself going back again. Something in you do, does not want it anymore. There's a power that's able to break it. The power comes from Jesus Christ. All eyes closed, please. This morning, God wants to reconnect you he wants, to, he wants to touch a part of you that will transform your life forever. There be any, anything you're contending with that is making you struggle in your work with God, you're struggling. In your deepest parts, you know that, Lord, I need you to help me in this area. I need you to help me in this area. Or you are saying, Lord, save me. I want to know you. I've heard what you have done and what you are doing. I want to experience it in my own life. If you are here and you don't want to leave this service the same way, you want to access the unlimited supply of God, as all as are close between you and God, just lift up your right hand and just wave to him. Just wave your right hand to him. Thank you for those hands. Just keep waving that hand to him. All eyes closed. Just close your eyes. Don't look at anyone. Just wave your hand to him like Jesus. And as you're waving that hand, begin to speak to him that thing that you want him to do. That thing you are surrendering to him. Just keep waving that hand and say, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Lord, touch me. Reach out to me, Lord. Boldly wave the hand. Lord, keep waving the hand. Heaven sees your heart. It knows what you are expecting and what you, what you need from him. Say, Jesus, I am here for you. I want to experience your healing power. I want to experience your provision. I want to experience transformation in my life. 
I want to experience your power. I want to experience the power of change. I don't want to live here the same way I came. Lord, stretch forth your hand to me. Oh, I'm here for you, Lord. A fresh start, a new beginning. If that's what you are crying in your heart, and you are waving your hand and you are speaking to the Lord, either you have a card in your hand or you don't even have a card in your hand. Or there's an addiction in your life that you want God to break. I'm a Christian, but Lord, take this for me. I want to, I want to stop smoking. I want to stop pornography. I want to stop this thing I'm doing. Lord, let your power come. Touch me and break this addiction from my life. I want you to just rise up. You have a card in your hand. You're waving your hand with joy. Just rise up. As you're rising up, heaven is counting you. Your name is registering in heaven. Just rise up wherever you are. Just church, put your hands together. Just encourage them. They're standing up. They're standing for Christ. They're standing for Christ. And just come forward, please. I want to pray with you here. Church, let's put their hands together as we encourage them as they're coming forward. Just keep clapping. Just keep clapping. Keep clapping for them. It's a day of deliverance. It's a day of healing. It's a day of God showing for His mercy. A day of grace. A day of the compassion of God. Just keep clapping. Keep clapping for Jesus. The Bible says when when souls are saved, heaven rejoices. Angels are dancing. A new song is going on in heaven for their lives. I want to church, stretch out your hand forward and begin to pray for them. That the Lord will transform their life today. That their life will never ever remain the same. Whatever is it in their life that needs to go, the Lord will remove it. Whatever God needs to bring into their life is brought in today. And today is the day of their salvation. The day of deliverance. Don't begin to pray for them. Don't prophesy upon their life. That as they have stepped out in faith for Christ, that the Almighty God will step out for them. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Just pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. I've heard your word. And I believe that you are Jesus Christ. That you came and you died for me. I confess my sin today. I'm a sinner. Jesus, forgive me. Have mercy upon me. Come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Can you open your eyes and just, just, just look, look at me? You are new creatures. You are brand new. All the sin, everything you have done before has been wiped away. Today, you have a new beginning. Hallelujah. And your destiny is full of beauty. God has so much for you. All you do is remain in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and increase you. And multiply you in Jesus' name. Before you go back, I just want to worship God with one song. Hallelujah. Let's just rise up, please. I want you to be free. Oh, the blood of Jesus. 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 The blood he preached and he healed forgiveness for sin comes with healing comes with miracle this morning you've heard the word you are saved 
it's time for you to be healed, be delivered. Receive the benefits of salvation. We're entering into a season. We want to receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. As men are expectant, they're believing God for something. Healing your body, healing your marriage, financial healing. I want you to stretch for your faith. It's available here. Don't just worship and think that you're singing. Something wants to happen now. Hallelujah. So don't be distracted. Close your eyes and stop moving around. No moving around. Hallelujah. Worship him knowing that he's here. Something wants to happen. Miracles wants to happen. Let's worship him. Of Jesus.
There is someone here. You have a problem with your spine. You already gone to the hospital and they've said it's a spine problem. Depreciate it. The hand of God is healing you now. Someone else, loss of breath. Unable to breathe very well. That lungs is being cleared now. There's a f someone you're feeling a warmth on your chest right now. A warmth in your chest. It's the hand of the Lord that is touching you. The hand of the Lord is touching you. Miracles are taking place already. Raise your faith. He's here to heal and he's healing already. going for surgery. Before the next check, hey, everything they saw, they will see no more. Yeah. Right now, every symptom that has sickness or infirmity was in your body. All the symptoms is gone right now. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. No. There's someone here believing God for a child. The child is sickly, always falling sick, one toward the other, and has always been in that condition from birth. You become a stranger to the hospital. The hand of God is touching your son. And the frequent visit to the hospital ends today. Yeah. Oh, oh, the blood. service right now. Releasing blessings. Financial blessings. I see divine connections. I hear someone right now just said, thank God I'm in this service. Just now. That thing that you are looking for, that you're thanking him that you came here, is answered now. You just said it just in a second. 
thank God I'm in this service. That miracle, that testimony that you have been looking for, that blessing that has been, has been escaping your hand is arrested for you. Makoria Masitelia Rahanda Lagada. Mikelia Rasatole Gedebron Sotolia. Antele Gedebo Shakalabo. I hear someone else saying, I'm I'm struggling, I'm struggling too too much. I'm trying everything too much. When will it happen for me? This is your season. Before the end of this month, you are coming to testify. I said before the end of this month. Before the end of this month. You are coming to testify. There's a student here. He's struggling to pay bills. Maybe parents cannot afford to maintain your school. And you've been praying. Someone in your family is coming up. Not from not far. Someone that has always seen you have never showed any interest to, to help you. We we'll rise up within seven days. And take care of your bill till you graduate. Someone is coming, not a stranger, not a new person that you know very well and has never handed anything to you, help you anything. You will get a call this week and you will return with testimony. Let us begin to bless the name of the Lord. Tell me to bless him. Hallelujah. Either the Lord has spoken on your own case or not. Something has happened here this morning. Thank you for your word. A miracle has taken place already. Thank you for your presence. A miracle has taken place. A miracle has taken place. A miracle has taken place. For those that are first timers in the new house, or you've never been to a service and you hear just for confirmation that God has moved in the midst of us. For all those that had pain in their body, sickness in their body, you listen with your hand. Just for a second, just check your body now. Let everybody just, just do what you couldn't do before. Just check. Just check if the pain is still there. Quickly, just, just move. If it's physical pain, if it's, if it's something, your body just check quickly. Hallelujah. Let us help them. Let us move and check. Hallelujah. For those that believe God for healing, God heals instantly. He heals gradually. Hallelujah. But He heals. He heals. Hallelujah. Just check. Check. Quickly check. Faith is not faith until you put it to action. Hallelujah. If there's anyone here that you came with the pain in time of sickness, don't wave your hand and you can't see it anymore. Don't wave the hand. I see one hand at the back. I see another hand. I see another hand here. Just wave it. Boldly wave your hand. Boldly wave your hand. Wave, boldly wave your hand. My sister is waving her hand. I see another hand there. Hallelujah. For those people that are waving their hand, waving your hand, just be comfort. I also take maybe two or three testimonies, hallelujah. And just, God bless you, hallelujah. You just follow my brother and you will be back with us in Jesus' name. Quickly, they will be done with you quickly. And if some people can also help among the ministers to so that it will be fast to get to um, get their details and they're back to, to join us in Jesus' name. Just a very sh sh shockerized. I want us to know exactly 
what has happened. Amen. Amen. Just quickly, just for, for us to know what God has done. That God heals and heals instantly. Hallelujah. He has done something. You must not live here without letting the world know that God has done something for you. Amen. So what, what has God done? Okay, praise the Lord. Um, it happened then, the last time I came to share my testimony here. Go home and ever since then, I, I don't know if the devil tried to Okay, since you said you will not fall sick. So, ever since then, I've been feeling this pain, but I said, no, I will never agree with the devil that anything is wrong with me. I've been coming, I'll pray, but it's not, as if it's not going. But today, immediately you said it, everything just disappeared. And even the ulcer pain that I've been thinking is too much fasting that caused it, everything just vanished. Like You were having ulcer pain? You thought you were fasting? I thought it was fasting that what? caused it. But now the pain is gone. Oh, nice. Gone. Like How do you know it's gone? Like gone. I'm not feeling it again. Gone. Gone. Very Were you feeling gone. it when you came to the service? I was feeling it when you were prophesying. I was feeling it. But As the word was going. You said it. It just flied like nothing, nothing ever happened. It flew. It disappeared. Wings. Like gone. Let someone shout a big hallelujah. My grandma and my mom, they have uh, arthritis and for some time I've been feeling this sensation in my right knee. So this morning while I was having my bath, I felt the pain and a bit of difficulty moving my right knee. So when pastor said we should use our right, left hand to touch where we're feeling pain, I touched my right knee. The pain didn't go immediately, but right now I can actually bend my knee and I'm not feeling as much pain as I was feeling. And I believe that before the end of today to be gone in Jesus' name. Atrocity is gone in your life in Jesus. And anyone that any spirit of infirmity, that is called from infirmity, that has laid hold upon you or any member of your family, that spirit is broken in Jesus' name. Amen. And you are free in Jesus' name. Amen. So many. Okay. God bless you. All your body was paining you. Yeah. Where? Which part of your body? All paining was paining you. Everything has been. You had what? Oh, you had motorcycle accidents. No, not that. What? Uh, something. So please, please can, can, can someone just let, let us know? Just, okay. just explain what uh, what happened. Something for my leg. Motorcycle fell on you. Yeah. So you had pain yeah. all over. An accident. And all the pain gone. Your legs gone now. Can someone just shout a big hallelujah? Ax pain from accidents, all gone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for healing me because recently I was having a chest pain, back pain, everything. I thank you, God, for after the prayer, I'm okay. Okay, take a, a deep breath in. Out. No more pain. You were having pain on your chest. As, for how long? Sorry? One month. One month. Pain in your chest, back, and all gone. All gone. Let's all shout a very big one. God deserves the praise. Hallelujah. Let the house just shout one more time. Yesterday evening, I could not bend my back very well because I, I didn't even know what was going on with me. But this morning, I was still feeling the pain. But after the prayer, now I can. Yeah, bend, bend, bend. Let's see. Yes, uh, up, down. One more time. One more time. Where's the pain? Gone. It's where? It's all gone. The pain is gone. Yes. Let someone shout a big hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. About three, four days ago, I was having this sore throat. I could not swallow saliva. It was really affecting me. I woke up midnight, drinking salt water and doing stuff. And at um, the same time, I had chest pain, I had headache. And they told us to lift one hand up and put the other hand on. Yesterday, but of course, I have just one hand, apart from the only thing I was doing. But 
so I could not raise it up. I could not right. touch. I didn't get that one. Like, <laughs> she told us to raise our, our right hands up and put the other hand where it's okay. pretty was. And this place was pretty me. This place was pretty me. I was like, <laughs> I could not. You so know. I said, you raise one hand up and put your I hand on where it was pretty you. Your chest was pretty you, head pitting. and throat. Exactly. So you know, so you ready? My head, my throat, <laughs> my chest, my head. <laughs> So I'm like, let me just put it on my head. It all starts from the head, the head downwards. So I put it on my head. And miraculously, the place I didn't even touch, no pain. Hallelujah. Else. Even the place that you didn't touch, yes. everything gone. Can you just shout a big hallelujah? Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's just clap for Jesus. of last night it was too hard to breathe. I had to go outside, pour water on my body and lean back. Wait, last night? Yes, last night it was it was too much. I couldn't breathe very well. I slept on the floor, it was not working. I went outside, I poured water on my body. So I, I finally slept, but I didn't sleep for long. Waking up, sleeping back, waking up, sleeping back. But this morning I'm feeling okay after the prayer. What happened after the prayer? I felt the warmth towards the warmth. Day and immediately my breath was flowing very well. Hallelujah. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let someone shout a very big hallelujah. So, before you go, sorry. Are you, are you a student? Which school? Akuka. FCC Akuka. I'm an FCC, I'm an FCC here. Just shout and celebrate, celebrate her. Thank you, thank you. For, for, for some, I mean, a lot of people here are from different places, hallelujah. And people giving testimony, they've come from different sides, the front, at the back. Did anyone lay hand on anybody here? They feel sensation in their hearts, lungs, exact issues that God spoke about. Let's just clap for Jesus one more time. Let's hear your testimony. Good morning, church. Um, I think three years ago, I had migraine. And it was really severe. Like, I had to visit my daughter once every month. And I came to school, I think, last year. And it affected me twice in February. Like, two days before my matric. And my mom had to calm down and everything. And I had to take drugs every day till it leaves. And while praying, I just felt something holding me, like grabbing my head really strong. But I can't feel anything again. It's gone. Hallelujah. Just want to thank the God of Something God. was just touching your head, head and squeezing it. Yeah. And suddenly, boom. You can't feel the pain anymore. Not even headache again. I can't no feel headache it. again. Nothing. In, when you came to church, you were, you were still feeling that pressure. I was having headache this morning. Headache this I morning. I can't feel it. It's gone. Yes. It's gone forever. Yes. It's gone back to hell. No more drugs. No more sickness. You have been delivered completely in Jesus' name. And so shall it be. I just, let me just seal it for you. In Jesus' name. You are healed completely in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I touched her because God touched her. I should touch her too. Not <laughs> hallelujah. So. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Uh, for the past few days, I've been having pains in my body up and on. And then last night, I've been having a dripping nose even till I came to the church. I've been having a dripping nose since. Well, when the pastor said should touch where should I didn't even know where to touch. I was just touching my face, touching my body, every part. And then all of a sudden it stopped. The pain's left. Like I'm not feeling any pain and I'm, my nose is dry and I can breathe now. Your nose is nose is dry. No, it's not flowing anymore. It's not flowing. Pain gone. Pain is gone. Yeah. I feel good. Can someone shout a big hallelujah for that? <laughs> All happen and all at the same time. We serve a God 
Give us mic. That is a very big one. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's us let's join and shout hallelujah for her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus one more time. Thank you very much. Hello. Um, I think I have like two things that happened. Um, when he asked us to pray for healing, I've been suffering from these terrible allergies where my eyes have been itching and itching. So I placed my hand on my eyes because I was praying that this hay fever thing should go away. But you know, the other side of the hay, extreme hay fever is that even though my eyes are constantly itching, I also have this tightness in my chest, which everything had, had taken, you know, I, I didn't even think about it anymore because it's been there for so long. But as I sat there, I suddenly started feeling this heat all over my, 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 my torso. And I, I found that was breathing clearly you know it was like I can breathe deeply so so that was one now the other one that I didn't even remember to pray about was um, it goes is a bit historic I had this um, these pains in my arm in my right arm and I saw the doctor they, they, they did an MRI and they said it was like degenerative changes in my spine that was compressing the spine and causing the pain in my arms so they booked me for surgery I was afraid so I chickened out and I didn't go for the surgery. And then just about last Tuesday, I went back to see the doctor. I said, you know, I, it's getting really bad now. You know, I just sit there and I start getting like electric shocks in my arms. I'm always, I can't sit still. I always have to get up because I have pins and needles. And honestly, when you, I was fidgeting where I was sitting there. Then you said somebody having a problem with their spine. And straight away, I just noticed nothing tingling, nothing buzzing, nothing. And, Oh, glory! Hallelujah! It was like, I felt a nudge from the Lord saying, <laughs> get up and testify. But I thought, what am I going to tell the surgeon again? I'm not doing the surgery. <laughs> because they asked me, said, will you do this? I said, yes, I'll do the surgery now. So now I'm, well, I'll do it again. I, wonder, wonder, wonder. We serve a God who never fails. Let's touch it. Would you rejoice? Who never fails? We serve a God who never fails. Who never fails? Who never fails? Forever. We serve a God. Never fail. Hey, hey, hey. Jesus never fail. 